According to official government data from the National Snow and Ice Data Centre, Arctic sea ice is once again growing with current 2020 levels exceeding 8 out of the previous 10 years. There is nothing catastrophic, alarming, or even a little worrisome about this data, and it comfortably puts to bed the prophecies of doom perpetuated on a daily basis across the Western media, the article says. Very few mainstream media outlets have fact-checking as top priority. There is a, a lot of grandstanding and paragraphs upon paragraphs on how science and consensuses have, for what will be the first time in history, magically combined to deliver an unquestionable truth. However, the blinkered exclusion of the um, Arctic sea ice extent graph that's in this article um, from um, any mainstream climate article should leave you sceptical. Well, of course, because what, um, what we're seeing with this is, again, the same um, situation where any information that questions and exposes the agenda has to be um, has to be um, suppressed because none of this is about reality it's all about creating the illusion of what is happening to justify um, an agenda that needs uh, uh, lies and misrepresentation uh, representation to be justified in its implementation. Um, and so um, here we have <clears throat> uh, a, a story from this week absolutely related to this. Democrats, this is this is the party of the, the, the Soros woke now. Democrats demand YouTube censor climate misinformation videos. And again, misinformation is defined as anything that challenges the official narrative. Do you remember when um, when people um, on the political left used to used to challenge um, what the establishment said? Not anymore. Not 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 the fake left. The genuine left still does. The fake left. The woke left. No, no. As long as what the um, official narrative says justifies what the wokers want to do, it, it must not be questioned. And you must be silenced if you do question it. Um, a Democrat um, congressional committee is demanding YouTube uh, uh, censor videos that contain, quote, climate misinformation as part of a new purge that would basically eliminate skepticism about man-made global warming from the platform. Um, they uh, say that... Um, YouTube has been driving millions of viewers to climate misinformation videos every single day. Um, now, some of these people at the core will know that they want to censor information because they're pursuing an agenda for people higher up the hierarchy. But m the vast majority of people um, of this mindset who are um, demanding censorship of other views that question the narrative are simply programmed cluelessness masquerading as um, free thought. And uh, again, you see uh, over and over this same recurring theme. Dictate the narrative and then silence any challenge to the narrative. Uh, but here's another story about this. Where's Greta when you need her? NASA witnesses um, dramatic polar ice collapse on Mars. As I um, said in a meme about this story, um, ice cap melt on Mars says NASA, yes, it's caused by human CO2 and Greta says it's stealing her childhood. Um, now, I don't think even Greta Thunberg, Thunberg, whether you supposed to pronounce it in Swedish, um, would claim, at least publicly, that um, the uh, disappearing um, ice caps on Mars are to do with 4 by 4s and, um, and all the other things um, 
that are claimed to be um, threats to human existence on Earth. Now, I'm, I'm just looking at it. Um, what are the what's the common denominator between Mars and Earth? Hmm. Ah, ah, do you know? It's the sun. And we also had a situation some time back now when this climate change hysteria, again, hysteria, was kicking off and temperatures were rising in that specific period, towards the end of the 90s, when the ice was also, again, disappearing from Mars. And there's a reason, you see, why these climate models, on which all this hysteria is based, by the way, not facts, computer models, crap in, crap out. The computer models don't factor in, in any relevant way, the sun. Um, and the sun does tend to be a source of heat. I find that, you know, I've, I've lived a long time, I've noticed. And so if something's happening with solar energy, it's going to affect Mars, it affects Earth. Um, and the reason they don't factor in the sun is because its effect on temperature absolutely uh, overwhelms any effect of carbon dioxide, which is marginal on temperature. Um, and if you look at the, the graphs of history, the sea absorbs carbon dioxide when it's cold and it releases carbon dioxide. It's the biggest carbon sink in the, in, on the planet, the sea. Um, and it releases carbon dioxide when it's warmer. And the lag time between the heat and the release of CO2 is about 800 years, according to the cycles that have been identified. And 800 years ago, in that period, we had the medieval warm period, when temperatures were higher than they are now, which makes absolute sense why carbon dioxide would now be released by the sea around 800 years later, because that's what the cycles show it does. So CO2 comes as a result of heat rather than being the prime cause of it. Well, uh, the Wokers, who may be um, listening to this podcast completely by accident, by now will be um, in the land of the bewildered because um, something doesn't fit the narrative. I guess I should be silenced. And um, like I say, the climate change hoax ticks every box for how this cult wants to um, transform human society. Um, and one of the agendas, because it's all about creating a technocracy controlled by um, technology and technocrats, scientists and engineers and so on, that run the technology. That's what the smart grid's all about. Um, one of the agendas is to have autonomous cars, autonomous vehicles in general, um, where the computer will dictate where you can go and where you can't go, and when you can go and when you can't go. Uh, and uh, so this stepping stone sequence to that goes through um, the uh, stage of electric vehicles. And we've had this week, the um, British government and the Prime Minister Boris Johnson um, drafting in a guy called um, David Attenborough. He's uh, a BBC wildlife programme voiceover guy. Um, and he's, uh, he's known as a, a, like a national treasure. Uh, actually, what he's been doing year after year after year is using the BBC, or he's being used through the BBC, 
to promote absolute propaganda about climate change. And some of the things that have appeared about polar bears and, and other animals um, in his programs that um, have been blamed on climate change when proper investigation by proper scientists have absolutely demolished his claims. But anyway, he's a front man, and so the government has drafted him in to promote a ban on petrol and diesel cars in Britain. I mean, this is, they watch for this everywhere. And um, this is the story. Boris Johnson is being joined. Oh, they actually call him this in the story. I must be psychic. Boris Johnson is being joined by national treasure, Sir David Attenborough, as he attempts to boost his green credentials by speeding up a ban on petrol and diesel cars, launching a United Nations climate change summit to be held in Glasgow in November. Good dear. What a fest of lies that's going to be. The Prime Minister is confirming plans to bring forward a ban on fossil fuel cars by five years to 2035. It will mean that in 15 years time, the only new option for UK motorists will be electric cars, although Denmark, Ireland, Holland and Sweden are banning petrol and diesel cars in 2030. The backing of Sir David, the veteran naturalist and TV documentary uh, maker, who has become a leading campaigner for tackling climate change, you don't tell, is a major boost for the government. Oh, do come on. So, uh, just before I, um, I go to an article about this, a very, very good one, um, there's another Attenborough story this week, because you see, what this cabal and its mindless mob promoting its agenda without overwhelmingly even knowing that's what it's doing. Um, it thinks the public are stupid. The great unwashed, just stupid. Tell them anything. But because they don't talk to members of the public, because that's beneath them, they only talk to their circle, their echo chamber, it means they don't realise that great numbers of the great unwashed are not stupid on any of this stuff they just don't get to the microphone and uh, this is the story David Attenborough's next BBC series Green Planet which is getting greener by the way because of the increases in CO2 which is to plants what oxygen is to humans the next BBC series, Green Planet, will be less pious about climate change. Crikey. What are they going to do? Tape his mouth? After viewers slammed past shows for being too holier than thou, confirms the creative director. Um, the move comes after viewers slammed past shows for being too holier than thou and instead Green Planet will aim to focus, focus on positive solutions that can help preserve the environment. Well, one way to let the planet get greener is to stop David Attenborough demonising the gas of life. That would be a start. Not that I want to shut him up. He should be allowed to say what he, what he wants. But it's, it's ceasing to shut up those that expose him for the nonsense he's talking. That is the whole point. So people get it. People see through the crap. And now I'm going to come to this article. When I was coming back um, over the, the water um, yesterday, on the, on, well, on the boat, it would be. I didn't swim. Um, I bought a copy of the Daily Mail. I'm not proud of it. It was the, um, the best paper available, really. Even... even um, two or three of the others were just absolutely I wasn't going to insult my brain by um, by reading them anyway this is a an article it's by a guy called John Nash and John Nash um, is a former 
national newspaper motoring editor. So very interesting stuff in there. I mean, you know, I, I was aware of it, but he's put it together here in a, um, in, in a single article. And the headline is Doomed to Backfire. The latest eco edict is for all new cars to be electric in just 15 years. The irony that you will drive you crazy, old bangers um, can actually be greener than electric cars. Well, quite a lot of things can be greener by their definition of green than electric cars. And I'm just going to go through this article. Some, you know, some reasonable chunks of it because it really is um, putting things into perspective. For those readers left scratching their heads over the government's ban on sales of all new petrol, diesel and hybrid cars from 2035, here's what I, a former uh, Fleet Street, for people around the world, that's a, a, a name for national newspapers, where they used to be, they're somewhere else now, a former Fleet Street motoring editor, um, will be doing to help save our planet. Our family car, a VW Golf, has at least a decade left in its petrol engine. Good care and servicing should stretch that to 2033. Then I'll buy the very latest technology petrol uh, or diesel car just before the pre-ban sales scramble causes prices to spiral. Why? Because I'm convinced that that's the greenest thing to do. The government's attempt to meet its near zero carbon target imposed by the climate cult by bringing forward by five years its ban on petrol, diesel and hybrid cars is well intentioned. Ah, uh, well, we'll debate that. Yet it is doomed to backfire as badly as the Model T Ford. We all know well from the great diesel debacle what happens when politicians grab the steering wheel of eco policy. Back in 2001, the then Chancellor of the Exchequer, Gordon Brown, slashed road tax and fuel duty on diesel cars because some boffin in a white coat had told him they emit 15% less CO2, greenhouse gas, uh, carbon dioxide, than petrol cars. Sales rocketed as eco-minded drivers rushed to buy. But then some other boffins discovered diesel spewed out vastly more damaging nitrogen oxide and nitrogen dioxide than petrol cars. What's more, their exhausts send asthma and heart disease rates soaring. So punishing new taxes got slapped on diesels. Costs spiralled and resale prices plummeted. Those well-meaning motorists got taken to the cleaners. <laughs> so... He goes on about on some length about all this, and then he comes to um, the consequences of um, electric cars. Um, he, he asked this question: "And where on earth will the electricity needed for all these cars, think global too, come from?" More than a third of Britons commute by car. Imagine in 2035 and beyond, each of those motorists arriving home at night and hurriedly plugging in their vehicles at around the same time. Malcolm McCulloch, head of Oxford University's Energy and Power Group, has warned that the uh, national grid will need another 20 gigawatts of generating capacity, double the amount currently generated, by the UK's uh, nuclear power stations to cope. Uh, the Engineer magazine says that charging an electric car at home with a medium speed charger is like leaving the electric shower on all night. If just a few people in a street decided to do that, it would blow the local distribution fuse. Indeed, um, May says, the whole system may fail. Ofgem, Britain's energy regulator, thinks this can be solved by making motorists pay more for peak rate recharging. This would create a two-tier system in which lower earning commuters would be penalised and effectively taxed out of work. The government's electric car dream wantonly ignores the other rapidly growing demands on our supply of clean electricity, including Ofgem's new drive to stop us using gas to heat our homes and to use electric instead. 
Um, on top of this, our ever spiraling use of internet streaming, downloading, phoning and texting, by 2025, it is predicted that server, quote, farms storing digital data from billions of devices will be using 20 percent of all the world's electricity. So we're going to need a lot more juice or face regular blackouts such as the one last August that caused rush hour chaos across the UK's biggest train stations, railways, roads and airports and left almost a million homes in the dark after two major outages. He then goes on to other consequences of electric cars. Very ungreen ones, by the way. Another problem threatens to crash the electric party. Sourcing the metals needed to make the car batteries. Now, <coughs> imagine replacing all the cars in the Western world and further eventually with electric cars needing these metals, every single one of them. And more when the next generations follow the next generations. Um, some experts fear that the planet's available reserves of lithium and are insufficient to make enough lithium iron batteries to replace all of our petrol driven vehicles. Others say that the cobalt needed comes from the Democratic Republic of Congo. I've gone into this from time to time. Infamously for its use of child labour and human rights abuses. But, you see, those things have long been way down the list of priorities by um, the woke left and the climate cult. Whoops, I repeat myself. Um, most worryingly of all is the need for rare earth metals such as neodymium, essential for um, manufacturing the magnets that make electric car motors run. Um, mining neodymium um, releases such vast amounts of radioactive contamination and other murderous toxins, such as sulfuric acid, that only one nation allows it. China, the world's biggest polluter in, 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 in many and various ways ignored by the climate cult. China controls about 80% of the global market for rare earth metals and their export is tightly controlled. Oil gave Arab nations power over the West for most of the um, 20th century. Today, um, neodymium may give China a similar energy weapon. Already the Chinese government is threatening to restrict supplies as retaliation against US um, tariffs. What's even more shocking, he says, are the figures I unearthed when our smug middle-class hippie neighbors began braying about how green they'd been by trading their year-old petrol car for a new hybrid. I discovered that manufacturing an average car generates more than 17 tons of CO2. That's almost the amount generated by gas and electricity use over three years in a typical UK home. And that's why it's often better to keep your old banger on the road than to upgrade to a greener model. Um, and um, see, what we're dealing here with is facts. And facts are not something that the woke controlled 1% want us to worry our little heads about because it demolishes what they're claiming. And, and here's an, an, another uh, story, actually I found in the same newspaper. Um, smart motorways, smartphones, smart homes, why are they so dumb? Um, and it's a good article um, in it's pointing out how all these smart gadgets and smart ways of doing things are making the world uh, dumb and are, in terms of smart ways, um, so dumb they're killing people. <clears throat> but what's being missed, what is always missed, is that there's method in the madness. If you know what the outcome is planned to be, you stop writing off 
what is happening in the world as bureaucratic stupidity. It is not. It is coldly calculated to a specific end. And just to show you how <clears throat> farcical and hypocritical this whole climate change is, this is a headline, sums it up really. Prince Charles flies 125 miles to give speech about the dangers of aircraft emissions. Ah, <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. Eventually, I say eventually, he might go first. But um, if he doesn't, this bloke is going to be king of England and the Commonwealth. Um, and the man, the man is moronic. <laughs> 